there! I'm Connor, I'm off the cuff, and today I am talking to you about Everybody Wants Some! with two exclamation points. Everybody Wants Some is the latest offering from the godfather of indie himself, writer-director Richard Linklater. Uh, this is his follow-up film to Boyhood, which came out in 2014, and it is being touted as a spiritual sequel to his 1993 film Dazed and Confused, which garnered him a lot of critical acclaim and put him on the map. This film was actually written right after he did Dazed and Confused, but he couldn't find any funding, and uh, he didn't get to make it until now, you know, after Boyhood, after the Before Trilogy, his couple of animated movies, his studio flicks, finally coming out. Um, it stars Blake Jenner, the boy next door himself, Ryan Guzman, uh, Zoe Deutsch, as well as Glenn Powell, and a bunch of other people you probably haven't heard of. It's about an incoming college freshman who plays baseball. Uh, he's just new to the baseball team, and it's what happens in the three days between when you arrive at college before classes actually get started, about a 72-hour uh, period of time. Uh, so what did I think of uh, Everybody Wants Some? I loved this movie. Uh, I should probably go into what I thought of Dazed and Confused, and I think I should also talk about Boyhood a little bit, because I think this is interesting, not only as a spiritual sequel to Dazed and Confused, but also as a follow-up of sorts to Boyhood, because um, this has a very similar structure to Dazed and Confused, where that movie was the last day of school, uh, through a bunch of different eyes. We saw the incoming freshman, the last day of middle school, uh, and now he's hanging out with high schoolers. We saw the last day of high school going into summer and what's going to happen next year at high school. We saw the last day of high school and where that's going to go to college. And it was all in one night. It was really unique, uh, really cool, and it really made you feel a lot without actually having too much of a plot. And then you have Boyhood, which was about a pretty small cast, really only four key characters, which turned into three key characters, um, and that took place over the course of 12 years, and it ended with Mason coming to college, and this, and I think Boyhood, in the years that I've been watching uh, new release movies on a regular basis, I started in 2014, um, Boyhood is the only movie I've ever given a perfect 10 out of 10 to, in like the hundreds of movies I've seen since the start of 2014. Um, I love that movie. I think it's one of the greatest films ever made. It is one of my favorite movies ever made. <clears throat> and it introduced me to Richard Linklater. I've gone back and watched his movies after watching that since that was such an eye-opening movie for me. Um, this movie is interesting because it starts off with uh, this character coming to college. It takes place in 1980. So it does kind of pick up where Boyhood left off, but has a very similar structure and style to Days and Confused. It's only 72 hours, and there's a lot of set of eyes to view this uh, story from. And I want to talk, there's a lot to unpack in this movie, but it's surprisingly simple. Uh, all that really is on the surface is a bunch of jocks who just want to get laid, they want to party, they want to drink beer, they want to do drugs, and have a good time. That's all this movie has on its surface, and it sounds completely really simple, it's two hours long of that, um, but there's a lot to unpack, uh, and I don't really know where to start other than with Richard Linklater. I want to talk about him as a writer, um, because as a writer, this guy gets characters. There's... Uh, stories that are plot heavy and there are stories that are character heavy. In plot heavy, you have stuff like Inception, um, you have stuff like uh, The Dark Knight. Uh, I'm talking about Christopher Nolan movies. Uh, and they're just the first ones that come to mind where it's go, 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 this is about the plot. Uh, characters are in there definitely and there's stuff to really get, but a lot of it is the intricacies of the plot, like uh, The Killing, Stanley Kubrick movie. And there's stuff like character movies, um, like Citizen Kane, like Boyhood, like, uh, I don't know, John Wick. <laughs> um, 
where it is more about these characters, and through these characters' eyes, it becomes more about the world around them. Uh, this is definitely in that character uh, camp of movies, but it's so far into this character camp that there's almost not a plot. And that's okay with me because this movie isn't concerned about being about a plot. This movie is about its characters and how they view their own world. And in that regard, it's excellent. Richard Linklater has a lot of characters he's juggling here, and he manages to make all of them sympathetic. We want all of them to be happy, and I think this is because he really likes his characters. He wants them to be happy, and he makes them sympathetic. There isn't the tool. Remember in Days and Confused where there was Ben Affleck, and he was just a jerk to everybody? But then by the when he left the movie, you kind of realized there was more to him than just the dumb jock who wanted to bully the incoming freshman, and it was done in a very subtle way. Uh, while also being funny, it's a lot like that, uh, where uh, there are so many characters, and a lot of them have their own little uh, eccentricities, some of them have their own little quirks. Um, they they risk blending together while they're all being jocks who just, you know, are all macho and flexing and looking at themselves in the mirror and, you know, putting cologne on and trying to get as many girls as they can. He gives them all a unique voice. My favorite character in this movie was the character of Finn, uh... Full name's Finn again, but they call him Finn. He is this uh, philosopher. He's always giving these uh, philosophical justifications for why they're doing is important to the human experience and why it's important to what they're doing. And I really liked him. He's like when you're coming into, like, so let's say you're a new freshman in high school. He's that senior who's just so cool and so welcoming to everybody that you kind of gravitate towards him. Uh, and some of the other guys who are around his age just kind of get sick of his, uh, bull crap. And so that, that, I really liked him a lot, uh, and how he would just go on these monologues. And that, I should probably say the dialogue here is very, very well written. Um, it manages to be natural, um, uh, casual, and, uh, very snappy at the same time, while also managing to talk about its, um thematic undercurrent, but it does this without derailing the scene and where it is. It always manages to relate back to these characters and where they are, and I really, really liked that. Um, the thing that makes uh, Richard Linklater's dialogue so interesting, uh, and I, this is also going into how he is as a director, is he's so natural at capturing people and humans uh, that you almost forget you're watching a movie. Uh, this place takes place in 1980. I didn't question where I was at all. I think this is interesting because of its cast. A lot of relatively unknowns. Ryan Guzman, I mean, hey, he was in The Boy Next Door, you know? Uh, that classic. Uh, he was in... What was that? It wasn't Josie and the Pussy. Uh, Gem and the Holograms. He was in Gem and the Holograms. He was the hunk from Gem and the Holograms. There's Zoe Deutsch, who was in Vampire Academy. She was in Dirty Grandpa. Uh, and then we have Blake Jenner, the, our main-ish character. He was in Glee. I never watched Glee. So it is really interesting having all these relatively unknowns. They, they do... Uh, and then there's Glenn Powell, who looks completely different in everything he's in. So it's really interesting. It's a lot like that Dazed and Confused thing where back then there was Ben Affleck and Mia Jovovich and Matthew McConaughey and Parker Posey. No one really knew who they were at that, at that, at that time. And I think uh, this movie's going to give these actors opportunities. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but when I'm in the 80s, it feels like I'm watching a movie from the 80s. It's, it's like that Dazed and Confused effect. That movie was made in the 90s and it was a period piece about the 70s. And watching it from... 20 years removed from then, it's like watching a movie from the 70s. It's very similar to this. This is a period piece made right now about the 1980. So what is that transition from the 70s to the 80s? And it feels like we're watching a movie from the 80s. It's really interesting, and I think Linklater manages to juggle that very, very well. Um, now let's talk about uh, Richard Linklater as a director, uh, because this movie is almost... Uh, autobiographical, uh, and this is also kind of going back to how he is as a writer, we're transitioning. Uh, this guy was a baseball player um, in high school, I think he did a little in college, and now he makes movies and he's a bit of an uh, artur, he's an artistic director with a scanner darkly and a 
the before trilogy in Boyhood. He's the indie darling. And I think that's why all of his characters are so sympathetic, is he was that dumb jock. And then he kind of became the artsy kid. So we have a wide array of people, from punks to country people to jocks to art students, and we like them all. So that's, that's interesting. Um, and as a director, you do forget you're watching a movie at times. Uh, he has a very meandering style, and this kind of movie should get very, very boring to me. But it doesn't, because he has that energy and that style, and you're always interested in what's happening in the moment. And that, more than anything, his movies are about capturing a specific time and a specific place, and I don't think anybody in the business right now is doing a better job than he is. This guy knows how to capture time and place like nobody's business. Uh, and uh, viewing this in his uh, filmography, I'm glad this is coming out now. I really am, because when you watch like something like Days and Confused, you're watching this guy make a movie with so much energy and he's younger and he's you know making a movie with like a like a rebellious young filmmaker and that's really cool i love watching movies like this and then when you watch something like boyhood you do kind of watch this guy mature behind the camera as you're watching these people mature on screen and then you have this movie where it's as bombastic and crass and crude as ever like in days and confused but there is more maturity and a little bit more restraint behind the camera and he's viewing his characters in just a slightly different way. And that's not necessarily saying this is better or worse than Days and Confused. It's such an interesting companion. And I'm glad we can have these two movies at uh, these different points in his filmography. And I'll just like to go back and watch these two movies as a double feature because I think they complement each other so well. Uh, this movie rocks. Uh, its soundtrack is awesome. You have so much different soundtrack in here. You have the uh, the title, the Van Halen song. Everybody wants some. I want some too. Wow. Wow. Well, however, David Lee Roth does that. Um, that's in here. You get two Van Halen songs. You get uh, some rock and disco. You get some country music. You get some punk uh, rock. Like, there's so much in here and. Yeah, uh, listening to this movie was awesome. All of Richard Linklater's films have had great soundtracks, and this is no exception. Um, as for complaints about this movie, I know I've just been talking about how much I love this movie, but as for complaints, some scenes go on for just a little too long. Like, there's mud wrestling at one point. Uh, I don't think that was necessary. I mean, sure, like, in the moment, yeah, it was fun, yeah, woo, they're at the party, yeah. But, I mean, it, th some things could have been trimmed down, um... Uh, then I think there's one character in particular who's a little too cartoony. Uh, I thought he was funny, but he felt a little out of where this movie was. Uh, but with all those minor complaints out of the way, this movie's last 10 seconds were great. Um, I almost, like, cried just out of just being so happy. I was filled with so much joy, uh... And when you get to that ending, you realize just how important everything was in these last 72 hours in these characters' lives. I loved Everybody Wants Some, and I am going to give it a 9 out of 10. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm Connor. See you later.